I've always said that Michael Myers is the greatest horror ninja of all time, and I'm about to talk about a kill that showed his ninja skills, but also something that I just realized that totally makes this work in a different way, might even debunk the fact that he was a ninja in this kill. Let's talk about it. Let's get down to brass tacks. Guys, when you talk about horror villains, Michael Myers, definitely one of my favorites of all time. And the fact that his mythology is so interesting, the fact that he could be here and then just disappear into thin air and it works in these movies has always been something that's really been cool to me. But I'm going to talk about the fact that Michael and his ninja skills have always been amazing. You know, whether you're talking about Halloween 2, or if you're talking about Halloween 4 when Loomis first meets up with him, if you're talking about Halloween 6, I mean, over and over and over again, H2O, like there's been so many examples through the franchise where he is here and then gone, obviously, many times in 78. But I'm going to talk about a kill that displayed his ninja skills in such an amazing way that nobody saw it coming but I also want to talk about how this whole scene may not be what I've always thought so you guys let's get ready to talk about this in the comment section first of all what is your idea of his greatest ninja kill or ninja moment in the franchise for me I'm gonna be talking about Halloween kills and guys I know it's a divisive film but hear me out it was a lot of great Michael Myers moments. There really, really was. And you guys know I really dig this movie. But we're going to be talking about the scene. Once we get to the part where he is literally fighting the whole town of Haddonfield. Such an amazing scene. Such an amazing moment for James Drew Courtney playing Michael Myers. I love this scene so much. He's facing so many people. Like 23 people or so. He's getting his ass kicked. He gets shot like eight or nine times. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, they are really kicking his ass. And I'm thinking, wow, they're going to stop Michael Myers? This is crazy, man. And then Karen, whose character had become so awesome, you know, and important in this movie. Like, there was this great character arc from her in 2018 into Kills and all throughout the movie. She picks up that knife and just stabs him i mean it was like insult to injury you're taking his own weapon and stabbing him and what we thought was maybe putting an end to him at least in that moment and then of course the movie it becomes almost like dreamlike i know a lot of people have talked about that some people really dig it some people don't you guys let me know what you think but it becomes very dreamlike and then you have tommy who's standing there ready to kind of finish him off and, and all of that type of stuff. Michael comes back and he's just killing people. He takes out Bracken, takes out everybody. And it's like, you know, slow-mo and the way that the camera was following Michael, it was very dreamlike. And then you also have Laurie and Frank in the hospital doing their, their, their talks. The voiceover is talking about the more he kills, the more he transcends. And the movie really gets you in this this interesting space because you just had all this carnage that was happening all this excitement all this intensity and all these kills from michael and now it's almost like they were pulling back and they were really looking at this from like a psychological perspective and there all this philosophy and so forth so as a viewer when i first saw this in the theater i was like wow what's going on here what's going on and you've got karen who goes back to attend to Al allison and you've got all the EMTs and everybody's there right at Michael's house. And so you're, you're put into this lull of sorts. And you see her look up at the window. And you see that image of a young Michael Myers in the window. And the first thing I'm thinking is, what is going on? Is she like losing it or whatever? You know, of course, my opinion, the film is showing how michael's influence has affected her you know his whole mythology you know this evil that's been infecting the town is is kind of getting to her as well you know she's getting roped up into this whole lore of what michael is and so forth now she walks up the stairs 
And I'm thinking, what is she doing? What what are we going to see when she gets up the stairs, right? She goes into the room. Nothing's there. You can see the lights flashing from the front of the house. And she's staring out the window. And I'm thinking, wow. I mean, what, you know, I'm thinking of Halloween 4 with Daniel Harris as Jamie Lloyd. You know, is she going to start to, like, go crazy? Is she going to be evil now is she what is she thinking you know obviously she's gone through a lot in these two films and her daughter was in danger so you have no idea what's going to happen and then boom he steps out behind right there like ultimate ninja skills like the way it was shot was absolutely crazy and of course he kills her which was a gut punch i was i was so i was so shocked in the theater i heard people gasping in the theater but that's not it guys because i think we can debunk this i think we can debunk this it, it was an amazing moment it was a really tough kill and you see you know, obviously laurie and, and it was just there was a lot of oddness to it but intensity and also the fact that he showed up out of nowhere out of thin air as he always does and i'm thinking how did he get into the house to be there to kill Karen. There's like a thousand EMTs there. They're all lined up in front of the house. The house is a, it's a crime scene basically, you know, because you have bodies in the Cameron and his father and so forth. So I'm thinking Big John, Little John too, you know, don't forget about them. So I'm thinking, how did he get into the house? And, you know, I know a lot of people have talked about this. I've talked about it myself and I've tried to workshop it and think, okay, well, maybe he snuck past them, right? Um, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, you know what I mean? Because he just went through his fight with the town. He's, you know, at least, whatever, two minutes away from the house, you know, because he followed Karen to the ambush. So how did he get in the house? A lot of people say, oh, well, he went around to the back. You know, because we did see that the house has two different ways you can get in the house. The earlier scene uh, in the movie with Big John and Little John. So he went in the back way and snuck upstairs. And of course, the stairway is right there where the EMTs are and the doors open. Allison was sitting on the steps. So how did he do it? Now, I know that a lot of people at this point, before I tell you what I think, I know a lot of people are thinking, look, it's just a movie it happens there's no logic to it movies do that all the time and that is true that is very true but i want to take a step back and debunk the idea that he was sneaking past the emts and that he don't get me wrong he's still a great the greatest horror ninja there's no doubt about it he just did it in a different way think about this guys when karen walks into the house and she stops and she looks up the stairway and then she looks down at the steps and she sees blood there and i used to always think well whose blood is that and she walks up the stairs and as she's going into the doorway there's blood there too the camera literally takes time to show the blood on the stairs and also the blood in the doorway of uh, judith's bedroom and it never really clicked for me guys that's Michael's blood. That is Michael's blood there. I mean, David Gordon Green is basically giving away the answer. Michael already was in the house. Now, I know what you guys are going to say. It's like, well, wait a minute. They had just shown him uh, fighting Tommy, killing Tommy, while Karen was already with Allison. I think that's just one of those situations where as when Lori was talking to Frank, you could take it a couple different ways. Either that's what they were imagining you know, the ending of, of that fight or just Michael killing people. I mean, he really did kill those people. But what I'm saying is the way that it was shot, it was shot in a dreamy way because of the time difference. You get what I'm saying? So Michael had already gone back to the house before Karen walked up the steps, before all the EMTs were there. And that would make sense. Now, I'm not saying that there weren't maybe a couple people there with Allison and because she was distraught and so forth, that that does, you know, pan out. That makes sense to me. But I think before everyone got there, Michael was already in the house. And when Karen was sitting with Allison and then stands up and looks into the window and sees that image of a young Michael, for all we know, 
it could have been the real Michael Myers right there, staring out the window like he always does. We had seen that play out in this new, this new trilogy. So when she's walking up the steps and she goes into the bedroom, Michael's already in the bedroom, which totally makes sense. Because think about this, guys. The other way, if we play it the other way, which is what I used to think, she would have gotten into the bedroom Michael would have had to sneak past the EMTs even if he went through the back of the house he would have still had to come through the house on the first floor and then go up the steps which is right there in front of the door walk up the steps then get into the bedroom and be right behind Karen that just doesn't make sense you know he first of all he would have had to do a lot of fast walking <laughs> okay and he's not a fast walker but I personally think this is my theory. I personally think Michael was already in the house before Karen went up the steps. I truly do. You know, the more I watch it, the more it just totally makes sense. Because again, you see the blood on the stairway. That's Michael's blood. And then into the doorway because he was bleeding. He was hurt. This also sets up ideas for Halloween ends because it shows just how badly hurt he was. How injured he was all of his wounds and it makes sense man because he was shot so many times he was stabbed he was stabbed with a with the pitchfork I mean it, look this guy went through hell he truly did but either way you look at it even if he was already up there he's still the ninja because he showed up right literally right behind Karen so you know when you talk about Michael Myers and showing his ninja skills throughout the franchise I think this is definitely still one of the best moments, but it works a lot differently than I ever thought it did. And tell me, guys, did you already know that? Do you think that that makes sense? Was Michael already in the house at the end of Halloween Kills? Let's talk about this. This is, this is absolutely fascinating to me. And look, if you're a fan of Halloween and other horror movies, this is definitely the place for you. So make sure you subscribe to the Nightwatch Zone. Give this a like and hey, check out another video where I'm going to be talking about one of the most brutal kills in Halloween. And also check out my video on the evolution of Halloween. I'll catch you guys later. If you're watching this, if you're listening to this, you are the Night Watch. Peace.